feel me? And then I'm here with somebody familiar. I did an interview with Chanel the other day at they spot over there at the Babe. And make sure y'all tap in if y'all looking to get a venue popping off. Y'all trying to get some photography, videography. I mean, you got 50,000 services and products, you feel me? So let's, let's start right there then. You can introduce yourself okay. and then tell them about what you're working with over there at that joint. All right, bet. Well, I'm Babe, um, AKA Chanel. I have the venue, the Babe. Um, it's a million different things I do, like he said. It is photography, videography, all multimedia type stuff, from venue affairs to just overall boutique. Like, anything that's creative and a source of a hub, that's what I provide. So, very business savvy. I've been doing this since I was like a teen. And yeah, I just, created something that I wanted to capitalize off of, but also give back. So that's why I created The Babe and I am The Babe. I wanted to, I mean, I'm gonna sauce you up real quick, for real, for real, cause it's real drippy in The Babe, bro. You Can got I the vintage, it? I know so. You always got very nice pieces on as well. I mean, I know you always style yourself. So like, I want to start there in terms of like, it being a boutique, you know what I mean? that's out of the ordinary for me, right? Like when I go to VA or the fact that like I haven't been there in a while, but the last time I was there, maybe y'all tell me in the comments, like maybe something else changed. But when I used to be in VA, if you ain't go to the mall, you ain't, got nothing. You ain't getting nothing, you right? Ain't got shit. So yeah. like what inspired you to create a boutique of all things? Of saying? all things. Well, let me touch on the fact that you're talking about yourself. Like I be down there, it ain't shit. Like my goal is to literally have mini hubs so future talking about north carolina i'm gonna be down there but yeah i've been doing this just off of something that i love to do so mainly i just wanted to create something that was an extension of myself so the boutique end i have things i believe in sustainability and i'm like i'm kind of like a one and done type girl like if i okay. wear it i'm gonna be like nah i ain't trying to wear this again might wear it two or three more times but Usually, if it ain't my like everyday, regular, like you know, chill type outfits, I'm either gonna sell it or give it away or something like that. So I was like, why not make a profit off of it? Um, and yeah, like I come across a lot of different things, like unique things specifically, and I'm like, it'd be dope if somebody seen this too. Yeah. Like it's just the hype of just seeing something that's like rare and like has a lot of timelessness to it. So. The boutique end, it's like, it's up. Anytime I see something that's dope, I'm just like, yo, somebody got to see that someone sell this joint, flip it, whatever, or wear it, style it, because I do styling too. So, like, anything goes when it comes to fashion. And it's kind of like an extension from being an artist. So if I see something and I can put the pieces together, especially with, like, an outfit, like, that's what I'm going to do. And then, Shu, you mentioned the, the styling aspect, so I want to I wanna go a step back because it's like, I know my relationship with clothes was initially a scarcity journey, right? Like my parents, they broke up and then that put me in my dad's care on his own. And number one, my pops from the military. So in his mind, he's like, I mean, you know, uniforms. So he's not really, but my dad know how I get drippy. Like I look through his, his closet. My dad used to keep name brands in there. So I would used to always be like, why are you telling me not to wear name brands? But he had the Nautica, he had the Tommy Hill figure, okay. he had the Polo, he so had he had it. So I used to be him. confused, like, you trying to put me in the Magic Johnsons. Right. Why am I got to get the Magic Johnsons? <laughs> you got the Converse's. So I, but once, like, I understood this, like, man, I done been holding these pieces for 20, 30 years. And I ain't just cop this. Okay. Like, I, he had that stuff from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I growing up as a youngin', I used to want stuff but I couldn't have it because it just, that's not where our money was at. So like, right. how did you get to the point where you was confident in your style and like you was confident enough to put that on for other people and collect pieces? Cause it's like, I had to figure all of that out on my own. So I'm interested in figuring out like how you got to that point. Literally same. So um, growing up, like I always was a little bit rebellious or in a sense wanted to find like my own individuality. So. Like everybody was strictly like Polo or like Mary Eagle, Hollister, right. that type stuff yeah. growing up. Like that was big for me. G-Shocks, all that stuff. You smell me? Right. Like, that was G-Shock. Like, yeah. yeah. G-Shock, he was nobody. And it was yeah. like, ah, but I didn't like the idea of you having to have one of those name brand labels to be somebody. So I was like, all right, how can I like freak this? You know, um, growing up, 
like I had a little bit of some at the same time it was a little bit of nothing so I would surf all the time with my mom she introduced me to it before I know I got hip to it I was like I'm not trying to be here like I was just not with it you know but then more and more I would go I'm like all right this makes sense like I would find pieces that would be like new tag fresh press I'm like hey yo this is is something you know so yeah. i started getting more into it and then i would find like versace pants like christian dior all types of stuff and i'm like yo this one say seven real rap though it'd be top like, late yeah it'd be yo, top brands in the third i'm like yo. bro this say seven dollars this rap. can't be look up authenticated and all that it's, it's legit and i'm just like why the fuck would i spend like you know seven hundred and nine hundred dollars for the same thing that i can get it for seven dollars so off of the rip i was just like okay if i've seen something that I like, that has potential, I'm gonna cop it because I'm real artsy. I like to like customize stuff and all that too. And if I see something that has like real value, all like already, I'm gonna like stun it, you know? But then something that I'm gonna find, I'm like, I can't fit this. So who do I know that can fit this? And I got you. Yeah, at first it was just like, hey, such and such, I got these, you wanna wear them to your shoot or you wanna wear them to your interview, or whatever. And they're like, oh, and I got joy of just them seeing something that looked real good on them and then it was like high end. So then I'm like, okay, that was a thing. And then people would literally ask me like, are you selling that purse? Or are you selling those shoes? Or can you make this jacket for me? I'm like, okay, yeah, why not? Like, it's something I love to do anyway. So it just came from there. Like, I just literally started there, like trying to find myself and what I wanted to do within my own creativity and my style. And then other people kind of gravitated towards it. And then I kind of like put it outward. And then that's how I am today. Like years and years and years later, it still applies. I'm just getting bigger with everything. Yeah. But like, I just want to touch on the whole customization type stuff. Cause nah, yeah, like, growing up, let's say if I had like just some fabrics, I've seen some shirts or whatever. I'm just like, damn, that look good, but it's way too big. Or like, it just don't look right the way it already was. So I would take it throw it on a jean jacket, like cut it up, whatever, do what I do, and then make a whole new thing. So that's another part of the like creative space or piece that I was talking about earlier, like just taking something and making something new out of it. It don't just have to be like a strict canvas. Yeah. It can be anything, you know? And I did like talent shows, all types of stuff with that fashion shows, like growing up, but got more and more into it. And then it was just like, I need to make this a part of the business too. So. And so that, you you know, I wanted to talk also about the creative elements. I don't want to wait to talk about that because you talked about earlier how you are business oriented. And, you know, I'm recognizing it when you speaking about certain elements, just like how you add value to a piece, you know, repurposing. Like I'm seeing key elements of what are those savvy business ideas. But like if you had to choose the top thing that is your bustle, your hustle, your mindset? Is it is it the creativity? Is it the business? Is it the the fashion? Like what's what was I guess the um, the beginning empowering skill that you had that let you know like I need to be more into the things that I'm into. Did it start with the fashion? Because I know that's where we started this conversation, but it's like you sound real creative and then I you, was you know I mean so what was like the 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 epiphany moment like okay. i need to start pouring into my to my creativity though i know exactly what you what to say for that uh, the creativity because having a creative mind can like open so many doors so understanding i can think about something and make it happen as if it was like voila magic that was like the thing for me because that can make a million and one different ideas but to act on them i gotta be in a like space where i'm creative and i'm thinking like okay let me do this let me do this i like create blueprints before I do anything. I can like write it out. I can think about it. Sometimes I even put it in like digital form and then I act on it. So like basically it's like, you know how people say affirming it or whatever, but before I even know what that was, that's something I would do. It's like part mm. of my creative process. All right. Yeah, like back. So like if I would think about, okay, well, I like fashion. Let me start creating you know, custom shoes, things like that, and then start judging them. So I would be promoting like, hey, I got these shoes that I sell, whatever, you know, you got your dad's birthday, I can do customized shoes for his birthday, this and the third, or for any place I would work at, like 
let's say I worked at a clothing store. So I would get discounts off the shoes. I would take the shoes and I'm like, all right, well, since I got a discount off the shoes, I can get this amount of profit off of it if I mm. like take the shoes and customize them, whatever. S stuff like that. So basically, it kind of falls into all the different realms of business is just like being creative. Because yeah, you can have like a mindset to say, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. But if you don't have like the junction or the drive or like just the, something that makes you different from somebody else, it kind of just like mundane. Everybody might look past it. You know, you might get some hype, but <laughs> if you actually like have a passion behind it, like the longevity is probably there more than likely. And then like, you know, it just attracts more eyes. So the creativity was something that really got me because I was an artist among like everything. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Like that's the part that add the value. But and then it's like it sounds like because I'm a very visual person. So it sounds like the business part is what ties it all together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, the way you explain things, you use business terminology, but that it seems like that's, like, at the end. Like, that's what ties it together. And like you said, when you get in the affirmational space, that's what designs the creativity, like, the path of it. And mm -hmm. if I may ask, right, like, a lot of my process of being creative comes from not having enough money like i'm from the hood so Yo, it's like <laughs> so it's like and if i do practice some business stuff and it'd be like this costs three thousand dollars <laughs> that's literally where my creative mind get to start cooking because it's like all right how do i get this done without three bands right so it's like is that and you talking about the process of making things from physical to digital digital to physical how did you come up with your process and utilize these business ideas or like these knowledges and skill sets to tie it all together because i can see it but i don't want everybody else to hear it so that they can determine like oh, that's how she put that together okay okay so uh, like you said turning nothing into something so basically what i did was all right create a process i just started a new business like yes another business it's called lucky you clean out so what i did was I stopped my regular nine to five. Well, actually it was like 12 hour shifts. So that was crazy. But I'm like, I can't mentally handle this and still want to be so business savvy. So I'm like, okay, how can I create something that's going to actually help my current business, but still keep me afloat to get everything else going? Cause I, I'd be working on like the anxiety of like, yo, I got to make something happen. Cause it's sink or swim. If I don't yeah. do it, then like ain't nobody else going to do it. So Basically, I'm like, all right, if I'm thinking about something I want to do, how can I help it um, help my other businesses? So for the cleaning business, let's say if I got a job and I have to clean out a property, I literally will think of it like, okay, they might potentially have things that I can flip. Mm. So if I'm getting it for the free and I'm getting paid for it, then it's up. So yeah. I would literally take those products, uh, flip them, do a good service and build off the service. So I'm like what are other things I can add into that so I can also get passive income. So it's just like a big old planning board. Now, that was a super gem. That was yeah. super smart. It's like levels to it just so I can know that I have safe shoots because I've been down before and I ain't trying to get to that space again, especially having a kid and, you know, a dog. You know, you, you get accustomed to a certain type of living and it's like, I mean, it's hard out here. 2023, it's like, I don't know, you got to do a billion things just to, you know, stay afloat. It's kind of crazy. But within that, I've been was trying to think like that, but now it's even more than ever. So if I can have something to, you know, help my current business within the product, so I don't have to ever worry about running out of the product, but then also help for passive income. So let's say if I do like Santa Clean House, charge like 25 to 40 an hour, depending on the job. Yeah. I'm going to be good. Then I don't have to work for nobody else because regular pay, it's just like, you lucky if you get 20 something. You lucky, hours. you really lucky these you days. Really lucky. Like, you really know lucky. Even then you still got to worry about bills because you still might be living check to check with the way these like house prices are. So I'm like, okay, if I do that, but then if I got my main business, okay. If I have the hub where I rent it out for studio affairs, if I got, you know, Monday through whatever, through boutique affairs, it's always something that's going to add into something as far as income, but also add into the business. So that's the whole creative process, like thinking outside the box to say, how can I make something 
out of nothing, but also make it make sense. Yeah, because you, yo, you broke it down step by step, and it's like a lot of times people don't know how they making things happen. Right. And you also mentioned like the reality of life and the demands that come with it. You know I mean, you're a provider out here. You got your whole mom, dog, mom, all that. You heard? So yeah. it's like I understand that pressure to need to be um, provisional, and provide results, and show up on a consistent basis. And you know, like you said, if you're not and if you're not strategic about it, there's intentional, but you got to be strategic about it and then carry it out. And then even when things don't carry out, you got to have those plans that at least keep up the business so that the business can then find a way to generate yeah, something. It keep going, right? Yeah, it's got to keep going. So I think that's a good segue into like, you know, I've been working on this group chat for like, I'll say like two months now. Yeah. And it was like an offshoot of another group chat that I had right just going into like the sentiment you were sharing where you got to reiterate and the initial one that i had was on this platform called discord and so i recognized that a lot of the people who are joining the discord were the people who were committed to engaging with me on instagram or the social media platform that i navigated them from and so then i was like but once i got them there they didn't know how to navigate that specific platform because it comes with so many other different features and yeah, elements. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, and I had to think about like, all right, as a business person, right? Because as a creative, I'm up there creating art. I'm learning different stuff. I'm creating a whole, I'm, I'm up there thriving and surviving, right? But it's like, <laughs> but I had to look at the people that I'm serving for the business and it's like, okay, they, they're not getting any value out of this. So let me bring them back to the platform that they're native to so now we have that's how i'm saying we got to the instagram group chat and now we're in that group chat and i think i entered i encountered the opposite issue which is with no barrier or effort of entry people are just chilling you get what i'm saying so like you don't gotta do nothing to get in there right so it's like business is a big it's a big back and forth of like you go in and figure out how to make it work and make it make sense. So I like that you mentioned the making it make sense part because yeah. you can have a great idea and it'd be like, oh my gosh, everybody's going to love this. And then when you hit them with it and it's not immediate, some people will just give up. Right. But it's like, I understand that people want to show up and be present on social media consistently as their authentic selves so that they can build communities up there as well. So number one, I got to make it happen so that they can see it happen. Because right. it's never really been done before. Yes. You know what I mean? So that's a part of the business part. You got to build it. And that's what it sounds like you're doing right now. It's like whether it's the business you just started or the business that you have or the skills that you've been leveraging to create that initial business. This is the, this is the life of creating businesses. It don't happen overnight. It sure don't. There's ups and downs and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I want to...